Um, I grew up in a very, very dark time in South Africa when the National Party had imposed the very brutal architecture of apartheid on the country, um, divided the country with its oppressive nationalism and its legally supported racism, and cut us off from the rest of the world. And the 1980s, when I was a young girl at school, was the height of resistance. There were a lot of um, uprising and things were beginning to crumble and the state was using ever more brutal means to try to crush the challenge. And I grew up in the Eastern Cape where one of these activists was a teacher called Matthew Guniwe. My father was a Scottish teacher who'd come to South Africa as a missionary teacher and after Guniwe's death at the hands of the police, um, later when I found out about it and the three other men who died with him, the Craddock Four, I spoke to my father and my father and he had taught at two of the same schools, had been appointed at two of the same schools but never actually met. They'd sort of crossed paths almost a few times, though my father had gone to his funeral. Late knowledge. I have forgotten the periodic table of the elements, apart from the famous few and the look of the waxy scroll of text unfurled against the science lab's wall, Earth's Ten Commandments, graphed in code. I went with my father in the night as a little girl when he was setting up experiments, sat long and studied it in fascinated ignorance. And I have forgotten basic chemistry, apart from the dancing fizz of phosphorus and the day my father's sulphurous show and tell expelled him and the standard nines out to the quad in search of air. The same quad where I watched the senior girls rehearse their witchiness around mysterious brew, their fire burn and cauldron bubble scorched into my brain. <coughs> Gudniwe, like my father, taught not far away, but then I didn't know his name. Craddock, just another dusty settlement, minor satellite to our own, all unrest pressed out to the margins. His lingalichle ar umazizake, stirring up a history, not taught in my calm classrooms. And he was sent to prison in the town where I was born, the communist suppressed, and then so inconveniently returned. I have forgotten, if I ever read, what the Eastern Province Herald said about their disappearances. Sparrow um conto, Fort Pelata, Sicello um flawuli, Matthew Ganiwe, the Craddock Four. If they printed anything at all until their permanent removal from society, that terrible permission from on high was clear. Who thought to bring the telephone wire? Strangled, <coughs> stabbed, and <coughs> shot. So dangerous, one killing wasn't death enough. Who poured the petrol on each face to sear away the individual flesh? What did they talk of while the bodies burned? And which one cut off Matthew's hands? What calculation was this? And what settled score? In the lab, my father readied for his class. I watched Lady Macbeth try to erase the marks but I drive now with those men. Olifant's hook to Blue Water Bay. The threatening and the defiant, frightened for their lives. That road, that darkest pass. These are the nights we've no will to recall, but must. How something evil always in among us was. In memory of Matthew Guniwe, Sparrow and Conto, Fort Palata and Sikelo and Flawuli. <laughs>